As Richard said in his introduction, it's a, a great honour for me to be chairing the Progressive Conservatism Project here at Demos. But I do realise that there is not a natural and easy link between uh, the idea of conservatism and the idea of progress. When we look at the opinion polls at the moment, and they are, uh, they are fascinating in many ways, one thing they show is more than 80% of people in Britain believe that uh, our country is heading in the wrong direction and want change. They want change for the better. They want significant change in the direction which our company's, country is heading. We have tried to encapsulate that in three propositions, and I'd just like to take you through them very briefly and then draw out some of the links between them. The three propositions are fixing our broken economy, fixing our broken society, and fixing our broken politics. For the economy, when I look at what is most unbalanced in our economy, uh, one's eye is drawn to the extraordinary figures for levels of personal debt, then of course subsequently uh, national debt, government debt, and linked to those figures of personal debt, the record on saving, saving by the personal sector in the four years 2005 to 2008, in each one of those years the savings of the personal sector in the UK were negative. We were net dissaving. This is, so far as I can tell, unprecedented for any advanced Western country since the war. When it comes to society, again I would identify two statistics that tell me what's broken about our society. The first is what's happening on social mobility. Now there is a, a long debate about this, but I think the minimum that one can say is that uh, if you look at the different successive longitudinal studies, uh, social mobility for the cohort born in 1970 was lower than the, for the cohort born in 1958 and there doesn't seem to be any strong evidence yet of a recovery. The best one could say is that since then it's been flat. Uh, and then secondly, my second indicator on a broken society, harder to measure, intangible, but what's happening on trust, what's happening on people's confidence in their relations with others with whom they may not be directly related through membership of a family or a specific group. And the statistic that brings this out for me most vividly is the graffiti test. You ask people in different European countries if you saw a group of 14-year-olds painting graffiti on a bus shelter, would you intervene? In Germany, 65% would intervene. In Spain, 52% would intervene. In the UK, 34% would intervene. And that tells me that people are adults, are more anxious about the exercise of authority and more anxious about their, uh, whether, uh, what would happen if they approached or challenged those teenagers. In the and for politics, well, I'm a sitting member of parliament and had my own modest, inglorious role in expenses and all that, so I'm fully aware of the uh, sense of the damage that's been done to all of us in Parliament by the expenses scandal, but I think the problem goes deeper than that one, looks at low rates of voter turnout by young people who are put off by the tribalism of conventional politics, and also some evidence that people are put off by ideology. They don't like deductive arguments, they don't like politicians who state that because of some grand principle that the politician is plucked from the air, therefore they have to do X, Y, and Z. But the same polling that shows people don't respond to appeals to ideology. I think 12% of people said that an appeal to ideology would in any way persuade them. Also showed very high response when people said that they would respond to appeals to the long term. And I do think this is the clue that helps link what I was saying about high levels of debt, low levels of saving, um, low levels of uh, social mobility, um, disengagement, especially of young people from politics, that what's going wrong, what is really broken and unbalanced about our country, is the balance between the present and the future the weight that we put on the interests of future generations, saving for the future, 
engaging younger people in politics. That value for the future, that challenge of setting proper weight on the future and rebalancing our economy and our society so that we do more for future generations, seems to me the most important single form of progress that Conservatives should embrace. But let me um, carry on by looking at another crucial feature of what seems to me to constitute uh, the progressive approach to politics. And this is a confidence in reason, evidence, openness. Uh, qualities which, if I may say so, Richard and Demos uh, embody in the way that they work. And then we've got insights coming from disciplines such as neuroscience and the maturing of incredibly exciting um, uh, intellectual uh, disciplines such as game theory and evolutionary biology and the interesting convergence between them. And it seems to me that one of the crucial features of a progressive approach to politics is to be open to these types of rewarding and still by and large novel um, insights into public policy and the workings of society. It is or is not just exciting, it is also scary. Uh, it's scary because it threatens some of our prejudices and assumptions. And indeed, I think it's, if we are to be serious about it, we can't simply use this to support our existing prejudices. They don't confirm every Tory prejudice. And to give an example of how my thinking has probably changed the most in the light of this evidence during the long years of opposition, it's... Um, what the evidence about our relationship to others tells us about the importance of equality and inequality and people's sense of fairness. These values reside quite deeply within us and I think I and my party attached insufficient weight to beliefs about fairness and inequality and that's a way in which our thinking has changed in the past 10 years and quite rightly so. But I think some of the most important initiatives in social policy that are crucial guiding lights as we look to public service reform are ones which don't simply treat the recipient as some kind of, well, don't treat individuals as passive recipients, but give them a much more active role. Now, Labour famously said in 1997, things can only get better. I think it's rather complacent to say things can only get better, but I do think that if we're smart about it, things can get better. Thank you very much indeed.